The Saxon kingdom of Wessex was in a precarious position upon the death of its first Christian king, Kynegils, in 642, with the kingdom of Mercia to the north aggressively increasing its power. It would be up to his pagan successor, Camwalla, to save them. Almost immediately, though, things began to go wrong. His father's ally, King Oswald of Northumbria, the only kingdom able to rival Mercia, was killed in battle against Penda that same year, practically ending the decade-long war between Northumbria and Mercia. This death of a strong king weakened and fragmented the Northumbrian kingdom, ensuring they could no longer be a threat to Penda and remove Northumbria's link to Wessex and its protection. Penda was also able to consolidate his power at home after killing off a rival, Eowa, in this battle too. All this resulted in a very powerful King Penda, and left Kemwalla well within the Mercian sphere of influence, sealed by a marriage to Penda's sister. Three years later, in 645, Kemwalla abandoned this marriage, probably in order to try and assert his independence and break free from Penda, and he took another wife. Penda was very unimpressed by this. Penda invaded Wessex in retribution, and Kemwalla was promptly driven out into exile. He took refuge in the Kingdom of East Anglia with the King Arna, who was no friend of Mercia and who regularly engaged in armed conflict with them. It was in that exile that Kemwalla was baptised in 646, having been converted in Arna's court. Christianity was by no means universal in England at this point, but it was spreading very fast. During Kemwalla's absence, it is unknown who held executive power in Wessex, with Penda himself being sometimes cited, although I find this unlikely. Instead, it was probably just delegated by Mercia to the local sub-rulers which we've been hearing so much about over the years. At this time, Mercia also directly annexed all of Wessex's land north of the River Thames, resulting in a frame shift of Wessex's focus much more to the south and west for the next century. Inexplicably, however, Kimwalla returns to Wessex in 648. We don't know how, although East Anglian help is likely. There can't have been a humongous battle though, or it would have been recorded. Although, given the track record of the Chronicles, maybe not. Immediately on his return, Kimwalla springs into action to secure and reform his kingdom. He moves the capital from Dorchester, which is now perilously close to Mercia, to Winchester, where it shall remain for centuries. He also reinforces his newfound religion by creating a new bishop in Winchester as well. Finally, to secure his power, he gifts 3,000 hides of land to Cuthred, Quitshelm's son. It is plausible that this was a thanks for aid in enabling Kenwalla's restoration, as well as keeping a strong rival to the throne on his side rather than as a threat. The near constant war with Britain and Dumnonia was back in full swing in 652 with the Battle of Bradford upon Avon near Bath, and then a decisive Saxon victory at the Battle of Pionima in 658, advancing Wessex's territory to the River Parrot. This was very important as it now gave Wessex control of Glastonbury Abbey, a significant target, and this may have been the objective of the whole campaign. This is not to say Britons inside of Wessex were treated badly, not at all, and relations were good, especially religiously. The Briton abbot of Glastonbury even kept his office. Mercia was not finished with Wessex, however, and although Penda had died in 655, his Christian son Wulfhere was still hostile. This all came to a head in 661 when war resumed, and this time Kenwalla went on the offensive. This did not go well and he was defeated by a Mercian army at the Battle of Pontesbury in Shropshire. Wolf here subsequently invaded Wessex, fair enough, and with Wessex's army now defeated and powerless to stop him, he had free access to the kingdom. Wolf here raided lands in the north of Wessex before penetrating deep into the kingdom. He inspired or directly aided a revolt in the Isle of Wight and transferred control over to King Ethelwald of Sussex. This is how Christianity finally reached the island. Wessex was in flames, greatly weakened by those costly defeats, and Kenwalla lost a lot of control over his kingdom. During this war, Cuthred, who was presumably Kenwalla's intended heir, also died or was killed in battle, leaving an even less stable kingdom knowing a succession crisis was coming on the childless Kenwalla's death. As a result, little happens in the final part of Kenwalla's reign. 
Wessex being a shadow of its former self, but at least this was a period of relative peace while it recouped its strength. Kemwala died in 672 without an obvious heir, ushering in an era of mass fragmentation, local wars and infighting within Wessex, where the so-called king or queen had little real power.